name is Mel, and this is my 1967 Corvette Stingray 327 convertible. So this is a car that was found in downstate Illinois. It had a frame-off restoration. It was done by a retired McDonnell Douglas engineer. He worked uh, at the factory in St. Louis. Uh, it was a 35,000 mile car that he had bought and had been in his family since 1967. Uh, he actually bought it from a dealer in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we have the original window sticker and the warranty protect the plate and all the original documents when he took delivery of the car. Was the owner protection plan which covered the car, as you see, all the different models from the Corvair all the way up in what was called the Protecto plate. So when you went to the dealer and you had to make a repair, they ran this through like a credit card and that's how they were able to charge the factory back for whatever warranty repairs. And this is the original owner's manual and um, it was interesting to see the stuff that they would talk about going back and in fact this guy even made sure he put amico premium gas in there and which oil he would put in 10w40 so when you purchased it it was in mint condition already uh, i heard about the car on hemmings motor news and at the time i got to it the body was off the frame and these cars you take the body off the frame you do all the work and you put it all back together and this was in the summer of uh, 1994. and why why this car well, if you follow Corvettes, you'll know that the 1967 was the final year of the Stingray, what they call the mid-year series. These days they call it the C2, or the Corvette second generation. Uh, 67 was the final year, it had all the enhancements, uh, had all the goodies. Uh, it was actually a pretty unique car. It was actually a car that was not meant to be built, but because of safety standards, the, the new Mako Shark body was delayed. So they rolled out the 67, they uh, built about 22,000 of them and it, today it is considered the, the most collectible year of all Corvettes. What was unique about this particular car, what attracted me, is it had a soft top and it had a factory hard top. It was a northern car and in the winter they put the hard top on to keep things warm. On a safety matter what was unique is that it's a car with leather seats with headrests which were for the most part unseen. Uh, fewer than a thousand of these cars had headrests and none of them survived. Most people just ripped them off and threw them away. I must tell you that the engine in this car is not the original engine that left the factory. The original engine blew up and in those days you had a five-year 50,000 mile warranty and this has what's called the CE block which is the factory warranty replacement block but it is correct for a 67 Corvette. Uh, it is a small block, high compression, a hypo or high power version. It's 327 cubic inches, but it pumps out 350 horsepower. And uh, it's a solid lifter car. Um, it runs through side pipes, so there's no back pressure. Uh, and it's it's pretty quick. Talk to me a little bit about what kind of gas do you put in this thing? Well, it's it's got an 11 and a half to one compression ratio, and it was running in what they call the Duntoff cam. Uh, Zora Arcus Duntoff, being the engineer, was trying to squeeze as much horsepower out of these small blocks as he could. And uh, the camshaft is a, a real radical camshaft in terms of uh, being able to move a lot of air and move a lot of fuel. Uh, and it needs high compression fuel. It needed, in those days, you ran into your neighborhood Sunoco and you put in Sunoco 260, which was 104 octane. Well, that fuel doesn't live anymore. So to keep this guy running happy today, uh, I go and I buy racing fuel either at the racetrack or even at the airports. I've had the car, this particular car, I've had a uh, little over 30 years. That was my son's bar mitzvah photo uh, when he was 13. That was in 1999. Today he's 38. But wow, car lives on. So I, I've taken this car to quite a few uh, concours events and national shows. Uh, in the Antique Automobile Club of America, it's won pretty much what it can. Uh, the car was featured at the Boca Raton Concours and it won Best of Class. Uh, the car won Best of Show at the Vintage Weekend down at Ocean Reef, which is another prestigious event. It's won uh, quite a few awards, and we're really proud of that. Show me your tires and your rims on this car right now. Okay, well, one of the first things you'll notice is there's no hubcaps on this one. So in 1967, they ran a one-year-only rim. These were called bolt-ons. And the years before, they had these spin-offs, which they were considered unsafe because they would fall off. So they, these are called bolt-on rims. Uh, very collectible and very rare, one year only. And what was common in that year were red line tires. And the next thing you'll notice right behind these rims are side pipes. In those years, it was uh, an option to eliminate the mufflers. So there's no mufflers in this car. 
and you've got basically headers spitting out the exhaust without any mufflers at all on each side. So you got one bank of cylinders on one side and one bank of cylinders throwing it out on the other side. Nice. Let's go around. So these are some of the stickers from some competitions. Well, recently this car was featured at Moda Miami, which is a new concourse at the Biltmore Hotel. This was just a couple of months ago uh, here in the year 2024. Uh, Lakeland Auto Show, which is Lake Mirror, and of course the Antique Auto Club. And I don't have all the stickers on here. Right. And then the NCRS. NCRS is the National Corvette Restorer Society. Um, they're the ones that certify the originality and the correctness of, uh, of these cars. Um, talk to me a little bit. This car has a hard top, you had said, right? So this particular car came from the factory with both a soft top and you'll notice these two bolts right here and bolts right here. There's a hard top, which I don't have in front of me today. Uh, again, during the winter months, uh, it kept the car snug because otherwise it was pretty cold up there with snow and ice. Nice. So take us around the back here. Okay. Again, this was the last year of this body style. Uh, it was commonly known as the ducktail. It came out in 1961 and it ran through 1967. Pay a little attention to that ugly looking reverse light. Well, there weren't supposed to be any reverse lights, but thanks to Ralph Nader and other people who were really into the safety, they mandated reverse lights and Chevy really did not have a reverse light that was uh, designed specifically for this car. So what they did is they basically cut a hole in the back of the fiberglass and these are two reverse lights taken from a Chevy pickup truck and that's what they used in 1967. How old is the paint? The restoration on this car was done in 1993 and 1994. Um, it's, it's held up really well because it's been garaged under a cotton cover for 30 years. Show me the interior. Okay, so in those years, you had a choice of many different colors and many different fabrics. This particular car is leather. This is 30 year old leather that was, uh, you know, it's been nicely maintained, your headrests. Um, the steering wheel on this car is it's not real wood, but that's what they made that year. It was a wood-looking uh, pl uh, plastic. Um, everything else on the interior is original, original carpeting, wow. um, and uh, your doors. Common to this year, last year, of the side vent window, starting in 68, that didn't exist anymore. 67 was the last year. And what's the, what's the tag over there? Well, <laughs> that was an AM FM radio, and if you take a good look at the tag, it talks about you know, FM transmitter and how close you have to be to an antenna for it to get good reception. But don't forget, FM radio is a novelty. And this is an AM FM monaural. It's not a stereo. Interesting. So um, talk to me about transmission. The, the famous Muncie four-speed close ratio transmission. So it's a four-speed manual transmission. Um, and uh, Borg Warner had a plant that GM took over in, in Muncie, Indiana. So they're, they're you know, beloved. They're called the Muncie four-speed and Chevy ran them in these cars for many, many years. This was an unhit car, and everything lines up just the way it left the factory. Let's see that engine. Okay, so as I mentioned to you, this particular motor is a 327 small block. In 1967, there were many different versions. Uh, there was a base engine, which was a 300 horse, and then there was a 327 high performance engine, a Hypo, which was 327 cubic inches with 350 horsepower. It had an aluminum intake and a very large four barrel carburetor um, and uh, it was uh, basically a small block racing motor that the GM had produced for many years but in the Corvette it really gave the most horsepower. No power brakes? No. Wow. No power steering, no power brakes, no options that would rob the engine of any extra uh, fan belts to take power away. So in those years your radiator sat up front and the radiator tank is actually on the side. Oh, Modern day radiators have the tank right on top. This is for radio static shielding. So underneath there you have the distributor and the wires that are going to each cylinder. And if you take a look under there, you'll see that you can't see the wires because they're behind the shield, which was supposed to eliminate static so that the radio would not have that. These days they have wires with uh, shielding built into the actual cable. When this car went through its restoration, uh, very, very good detail was paid to making sure that all the original hoses and clamps and everything that went back into the car would be identical to the way the car was built in the factory in 1967. So what do we have here? So the stable mate to the 67 is a 71. Uh, this is a T-top coupe. Um, it was known as the LT1. 
1970, 1971, and 1972, uh, head engineer Zora Arkus Duntoff wanted to bring out as much horsepower as he could, knowing that what was coming up with low lead and no lead fuel, he had to lower the compression ratio on all these engines. So what he did is he created a very special motor out of the small block. By then it went from being a 327 to a 350, mm -hmm. and it remained a 350 for decades. Uh, and he put all the tricks in the book in a super high performance uh, small block. Can uh, we take a look inside? Absolutely. This particular engine may look a little like the 67 because the guts of it are the same, but it is a, three, a 350, a 350 uh, cubic inch, but it put out 330 horsepower. Now understand in 71, horsepower was measured true net horsepower. Uh, gross horsepower on this car would have been well over 400. Mm. And this thing has all the goodies. It has dome piston heads, forged cranks, uh, aluminum intake, of a huge 800 CFM carburetor, a big, big breathing carburetor, uh, a 411 rear end, which was a racing rear end, uh, a special four speed high performance uh, transmission, uh, all the goodies that could be jam packed into a car. The engine option on this car was close to $500, and most people just didn't spring for it. You'll notice the old 1970s safety buzzer. Oh, how funny. So this is a very rare car, huh? Well, what made this car particularly rare happens to be its color combination. This car has a one-year-only color, which is, in fact, British racing green. But they made a deal with British Leyland. Remember that in those years, uh, transmissions, air conditioners, starters, generators or alternators, a lot of that stuff was General Motors, and they put them in Jaguars, they put them in Rolls-Royce, they put them in Bentley, and in exchange, they kind of made a deal. They wanted to go ahead and paint the Corvette British Racing Green, <clears throat> but they wouldn't let them call it British Racing Green. So what GM did is they named the paint color after the racetrack in Kent, England, where they ran the, the British Grand Prix, and it was called Brands Hatch. So the color of this paint, a one-year-only paint, is Brands Hatch Green. And it is, in fact, an identical uh, color. What made this car particularly rare is almost all of them came out of the factory with black interiors. This car is one of three cars that left the factory with, with saddle interior and British racing green. Huh. Another rarity to this car were the wheel covers. Those are actually hubcaps. They were known as aero turbine wheels. And um, they were unique to... 70, 71, and 72 Corvettes. And you got the poly tires on them, right? Well, these are wearing original Goodyear tires. Wow. Uh, I have tubes in them so that they'll continue to hold air, but those tires are, in fact, over 50 years old. And the sixth series started in the year 2005, and it ran through the year 2013. In 2008, they wanted to create a super high-performance Corvette, which we now know as the Z06. And the Z06 in 2008, they created a special edition, which was a 7 liter, 427 cubic inch, reminiscent of the 427 big block that was featured in the 67 Corvette. This particular um, rare car was named after the Corvette plant manager, Will Cooksey, who retired that year. And each car is individually hand signed by Mr. Cooksey. Uh, this particular car is number 303 of five, a 427 produced. Beautiful, awesome. Well, this interior is very unique because it's tritone. It's charcoal, it's got a gray and red carbon fiber center console. No other Corvette has ever been produced with a red carbon fiber center console. This particular engine was called the LS7. The LS7 was a monster. It produced 505 horsepower without a supercharger and without a turbocharger. Um, and this was considered the highest horsepower V8 ever made by General Motors at that point. How are the reactions when people see it? A little thumbs up. You get the usual Corvette wave. So if you guys like this video, don't forget, please subscribe, share with your friends. Until next time.